Thank you for tuning in to TalkWad.com, the world's fastest growing internet radio network. Please check out all the other great shows on www.talkwad.com. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. She has a wonderful personality. She really does. You are listening to Talking with Gloria. Let's take a walk on the wild side. With your host, Gloria Ponziano. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to Talking with Gloria. I'm your host, Gloria Ponziano, and joining me this evening in the studio is my distinguished guest, Mike Labour from Elite Body Personal Training. Hi, Mike. Gloria, how are you doing? Thanks. Good, good. Get a little bit closer to that microphone. How's that? That's Better? pretty okay. good. You know, I, you're always watching my form in the, yes, in the gym, <laughs> and I'm going to be watching your form here. Make sure you get right on top of that. There you go. Because... How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a little bit of a mishap last week, and we didn't get Mike on the show. And so this week, we're going to be talking about quite a few things. I Remember I said, don't let me forget to talk about injuries, because that was something that I experienced myself. Yes. So so tell us, Mike, what, um, what's been going on with Elite lately? What's going on with Elite? Yeah, there's some big, big news. Big, big magazines, articles. Magazines, uh, the show. Mm-hmm. Start to put that yes. on top right there. The show. The digital videos, instructional videos. It breaks down like a, like a per exercise for a leg press, for example. You break it down exactly how it should be, how you how it should feel on the body part. You got the post workout meal. The importance of a post workout meal and video mm-hmm. as well too for people to see. Facebook is doing great. Let's see what else we. Group classes are picking up. Yeah. It's all, it's all yeah. doing good. It's all yeah. good. Yes. I'm still not real crazy about this this microphone. I just want to make sure. Let's um, bring it a little bit. I think you got to get a little more. How's that? Ah, it's ah, pretty good. Now, go. now good. you sound like you're talking to me in the gym. <laughs> That's how it's. Ten more. Yeah, <laughs> ten more. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start out with, um, I want to talk about an injury. Now, mm-hmm. a lot of people that have gone to gyms or personal train work with personal trainers, I know from my past experience as a trainer, I had several clients that would come to me and they were a little fearful to work with a trainer because they had been hurt in the past. Mm-hmm. By that, I mean, that maybe their trainer wasn't watching them and they hurt their back. And that, that was a pretty common injury, I might add. Absolutely. And um, let's talk about what happened to me uh, that was about two, three weeks ago, yep. right? Yep. And I, you had me doing push-ups right. off the boasty ball. Yes. And <laughs> oh boy! I, for those of you that are tuning in, if you can just, if you can use your imagination and get the visual on this, when he he turned the boasty ball upside down, round side on the bottom, if you know what they are, like this, and he tells me he wants me to do three push-ups, and when I come up, he wants me to take. Bosey ball off the ground with right. me. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you just sit at home at night and dream these things up? So anyway, long story short, I did it, and then he had me do increase my repetitions, yes. and then I was on my last set, and I, 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 I at first I was going to say I was showing off, but I really yeah. wasn't. I was competing with myself. Right. I wanted to really push myself. And see how many I could do. And I was, what, up to like, what, 10 or something yes. like that? Yep. Up to 10. And, uh, of course, you were encouraging me, like, wow. But that last one that I did, mm-hmm. even though I did the 10 reps, I felt something in my lower back. And right. I told you immediately. Now, the reason that I'm bringing this up to the audience is because when you feel something, you need to tell your trainer immediately. They need to be made aware of what you're feeling in your body so that they can determine whether or not it's an injury or if it's just fatigue from the muscle. Right. And knowing a little bit about it, I looked right at you and said, Mike, I, I did something to my back. Yeah. And t- 
tell them what you did. I mean, okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> what actually what Gloria did in, in a push-up position, you want to maintain a, a, a plank position. You know, picture a plank nice and straight here. Now, fatigue does kick in. And what happens when you start to get tired and, you know, this push-up, primarily it's your, it's your chest muscles that will be working. you got triceps involved, shoulders, or primarily chest. And now the chest is fatiguing. And when that happens, a lot of times your form sacrifices. And when she allowed herself to just leave that plank position, drop the hips just a little bit in order to finish the exercise. And when you do that, you're dropping them hips, you leave that plank position, you're going to put a tightness on your erector muscles, which are your lower back muscles. Two thick muscles that run right alongside your spine. And once that happened, and I noticed that happened, when I got the feedback right away, as Gloria said, it was great that she did that. Um, I knew it was just a tightness of the back, you know, and, and it's kind of a scary thing when that back tightens up like that, like, uh-oh, what did I do? So immediately I, I put her on a, on a mat, back back down, put a Swiss ball, which is like a beach ball, and the BOSU ball that Gloria was talking about is a Swiss ball just cut in half, put on a disc. Um, so you can, if you can picture that. But now I put her on a Swiss ball, which is a round ball, put, put the legs on top, arms are out like this, forming the letter T on the mat, just like what Gloria's showing you. And then I put her hips on a swivel, and I had to come back and forth with the legs, like, like a, just take it like a windshield wipers, back and forth. Roll it, In control. Roll it, yeah. yeah, you don't want to be, you know, out of frail and all over the place where you got momentum going. And forcing her to use the trunk to bring the legs back and over. Your legs are like dead weight on that ball. Right. And uh, you do, ten, you know, 15, 20 reps, and then you can start seeing the increasing the stretch where her knee can basically touch the floor without mm -hmm. the shoulders coming off the floor as well. And, uh, that really loosens up the lower back, and I knew it, uh, that would help. And when I got her back on her feet, it was like it was gone. She was ready to go for the next thing, which was great. You took me over to, after you did that, as far as, like, relax, getting the muscles to loosen up a little bit, you took me over to that other ball. Remember, the, uh, there was a, another ball that you right. took me to, and you had me lay back. Right, and you and, did a bridge. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yep. okay, a bridge. And a you bridge. had me, for those... For those that are watching and have no idea what we're talking about, he had me lay backwards on this ball and stretch my hands all the way down to the floor. Right. And I heard everything go pop, 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 yep. pop yep. immediately. Yep. And it was gone. And right. I, I never even had stiffness in it. So right. yep. that was amazing. If I hadn't told you about that, I would have definitely been having some problems right. the rest yep. of the week. Yep. And there are a lot of people that will do that. They'll just kind of tough it out, try to tough it out. And then you can cause more tightness and then actually an injury. You know, we don't want that to happen as well too. So you really need to speak up. Right. Yep. Now we did have, um, we had some uh, emails that came in, or at least I did about, a couple, people want to know about supplements. Right. What do you recommend for supplements for people that are working out with weights at least three times a week? At least three times a week. Um, well, the best supplement is, is, is whole food. You know, um, we're going to make sure that they're eating correctly and frequently, keep your metabolism going. Um, as a weightlifter three times a week, if you're working out, we're going to have you higher on a protein as well. Um, but in, in addition to that, when you start hitting 35, 40 and up now, um, muscle repair recovery is important and a, a branch chain amino acid is highly recommended for those clients. Um, it is, is protein without any nutritional value. There's no, there's no calorie caloric intake uh, on that, on the branch chain amino acid, but it will help for muscle repair and recovery. Um, so that, that's one thing there, too. A uh, multivitamin, of course, <clears throat> I always uh, want to include that because, you know, is, and I, I eat as clean as, as, as you probably can. And, and, and it's tough, especially in today's society, where food is broken down and all, too, to, to eat and get all those nutrients in. Because what happens, you know, you know the time it gets to the store and, uh, you know, from, from where this food is coming from, it's, uh, it's broken down, broken down, and then again, and then... Uh, uh, preservatives, things like that, that are putting in there too. So you don't really get that quality that you, you should be able to get from from whole food. So that's why the, the multivitamins are very important as well. Um, but depending on what your goals are, now if you're a guy that want, wants to play football, a creatine is a proven supplement. Um, but it's again, it's it's all about what your goals are. You know, I'm not going to give a lady that's looking uh, to lose lose some weight creatine. You know, now if you go to any of those. Uh, vitamin <laughs> shops, places, and I don't want to say that name because that's an actual place, but, you know, a health food store, they're going to sell you, they're going to sell you whatever they, they can sell you, you know All what right. I mean? So you really need to know that individual of what their, what their goals are so you can uh, come up with a, with a, with a plan that's, that's best for them. I believe we've got a caller. Will is uh, giving me a cue that we have a caller, right? We have a caller on the line, Will? Caller? Yes. Hi. You're talking with Hello. Gloria and Mike. 
Hi, Mike. This uh, is uh, Gloria. This is Scott in Chicago. How are you guys doing? Hi, Good. Scott. Good. Scott. How are you? Good. Um, Gloria told me that this was going to be a, a thing that I might have uh, uh, some valuable uh, benefit from. So, uh, Mike, I'll just give you a quick synopsis. I'm a 52-year-old guy. Uh, used to be very athletic. Played a lot of basketball uh, in my youth and even into my uh, 40s. And I've run into uh, kind of a position where the joints aren't what they used to be, but the will is what it still was. Right. And um, right now I'm using some uh, glucosamine and chondroitin uh, to try to, uh, you know, keep the knees lubricated and stuff like that. And and uh, I, if I play basketball without it, uh, it takes three or four days to, sure. to recover. And if I uh, play basketball with it, it only takes about a day, day and a half to recover. Right. Um, I'm kind of wondering at the same time if, if that's even good for me, if there's something better. Uh, I'm also wondering, you know, like in the young days when you used to start lifting, you get glad a little too hard too soon. Yes. And you'd feel all the aches and pains in the muscles till they got used to the lifting. I'm wondering if, uh, if I started playing more frequently, if that may help the knees. Absolutely. I'm not certain about that. That's, that's a good question. Yes, and yes, it will. Just like the you're talking about, you know, with working out is that soreness period. It usually lasts about two weeks or so. And then, uh, you know, that sore, soreness period will dissipate. And, you know, the, the worst thing you can do then is stop training again because when you do come back, you're going to experience that all over again. You know, and I've had cl many clients over the years do that. <laughs> I think they're like sadists, you know. I'd say, you know, they, they work out and they go through that soreness period. They're doing okay for a month or two. And then, uh, take some time off again, and then right back to square one. Um, but uh, the frequent playing for you as well, too, will definitely help it, help you out as, as well. Um, the glucosamine, a proven supplement that's excellent that you're doing that. Um, probably one of the best things out there for, for joint for, for joint relief, put it that way. Because, you know, it's a fact. As we get older, um, the body's, you know, it sounds morbid, but the body's dying slowly, you know, and uh, that's the aging process. And if you allow it to happen, by not eating correctly or moving and, and exercise, you're going to become easy prey. You know, and it's, it's going to come at a rapid pace. Would so, he be experiencing, I mean, would some of this be coming from inflammation? Is there something you can recommend for that? Yeah, well, is it inf inflammation too? And I was going to get to that next supplement, which I'm, I'm taking myself right now. It's called, uh, is, is a company out there, it's called Isotonics. It's a, uh, it's a cocktail, actually. I love it because of the absorption rate, you know, that, that the body just takes it right in within 15 minutes. And they got some stuff that's called OPC. And uh, if you can just read up on that, you'd be amazed. Everybody on the planet, at least from 40 years old and up, should be taking the OPC here. But it's, it's incredible, you know, because you may have some old in injuries like I did too with football. And then, you know, arthritis starts forming that area there. And you're kind of dealing with it. But the, the OPC attacks inflammation in the body. That's OP as in Paul, C as, as in, in cat? Paul, as in C as in cat. OPC, okay. I can I can send you some information on that, Scott. Okay. And now, is, you know, Gloria and I have talked for a lot of years about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, she she and I, you know, I'm probably the worst person in the world uh, as far as preparing myself to work out because I never really had to. You know, I used to be able right. to just walk on the court and be be loose. Now it's something else. She was ask me. You know, if I do anything to prepare, you know, my body for, right. for you know, take any you know supplements, prepare or and then supplements afterwards. And uh, I, quite frankly, I don't even usually. I usually play basketball at seven o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, and mm -hmm. and I usually walk, get out of bed, you know, have a glass of juice and go to the court. I don't do right. much of anything. Right. What can I do? You know, supplement wise or. I mean, I know stretching, I do that. But yeah, that's, stretching that's is important, it. but again, then again, like say you're 7 in the morning, you don't want to stretch uh, a cold muscle, right? You know, that, that's why when I have my clients come in and, you know, it seems like, okay, why do I got to walk on this treadmill for five minutes? And that's a great question. But what it does, it elevates your body temperature, all right? Now you got that blood flow going throughout the body. And then when they come down off that treadmill, ready to start their exercise, I may have them do like a sports-specific type movement, you know, depending on what body parts we're doing that day. But now you're, you're warming up and stretching a warm muscle. That's where you want to be. Uh, nothing worse than you. You wake up in the morning, you like the Tin Man, and uh, everything's stiff, and you go to stretch something, and you, you just roll in the dice. You know, you can pull a muscle very easily that way. 
Um, so you definitely want to do something where you're breaking a sweat. I like to have my clients come down on the floor where they got, um, they're perspiring just a little bit. They got a little glaze going, you know, and, and, and now they're warm and they're ready to go. A lot less risk of injury that way. So could he do something like just getting on the court and just doing a little bit of a jog around exactly. the... Exactly. Just a little bit of a jog. Just get, get the heart rate just up. Get and the just, heart rate up. Yeah. Get that blood flow going. Get warm. You know, body get the, temp is yeah. coming up. Yep. Start to feel a little sweat and then do your stretching. Yep. And do some stretching and, and you, you'll be in a lot better place. Now, what about his recovery, though, as far as a, a post uh, for recovering after he's done playing basketball? You recommend that he take something like a, a meal replacement? Well, I, I definitely, you know, like like a workout, too. You know, your heart rate is up. You're playing. You play full court? Oh, absolutely. Okay, great. Yep. So uh, you're, you've are you been going for quite a while there. So your body is, I mean, the last thing you're probably going to want to do is eat down some good protein, like some chicken and a sweet potato. <laughs> I mean, that's a great meal, but not at that time. Your stomach's in turmoil, so to speak. But you are thirsty. You've been running around. So nothing like a, a meal replacement shake, as, as Gloria mentioned. You get your protein in there, your carbs, and healthy fat. Takes all the guesswork out of there. It's cold, and you're drinking it. And that's what your body is craving at that point, too, just to, to get something cold to drink. And uh, your body will, will take it in like a sponge and, and get those nutrients to the body uh, um, for, for recovery, for that muscle recovery. And then about two what hours after that, you can... That? I'm sorry? What do you recommend for that? I mean, that, a protein drink? Or? Uh, well, no, a meal replacement drink. I'm glad you said that. A protein drink, you know, there's protein drinks or mixes that are just protein, which is, you know, that, that's one thing. Meal replacement is that same protein in there, but it's got carbohydrates present as well. And that's what we call it a meal replacement. All you, The three micronutrients are present. Your carbs, your protein, and fat are all there. And that's why they call it a meal replacement, because now you're replacing what a meal is. You know, um, a piece of chicken is not a meal. It's just protein. You have it with a sweet potato, all right, you know, and, and, and maybe, the, you know, chicken with some good olive oil. That's your healthy fat, the fat that we're talking about. Now you got a meal, you know, and so the, the liquid will be a meal replacement. So to just do protein, that's not the answer either. You need the carbohydrates. You know, carbohydrates, is, uh, it's got a, a bad name, and it really shouldn't have because it's, it's got a purpose for us. It's energy. It's fuel for the body. Um, you need that, you know. Um, excessive carbs, yeah, will turn into fat, and that's how most Americans do eat. You know, they're kind of eating pasta with bread on top of that carb on top of carb, and they, and they eat an abundance of it as well, too. So um, the meal replacement is where it's at for a post-workout meal. Okay. So, so when you're looking and shopping for your protein meal replacement, just make sure that if it's got, like, what, 25 grams of 25 grams of protein, protein in there, about, about 15 grams at, uh, at carbs. So the protein still wins out on that, but you do have the carbs that are present. And it'll, it'll say meal replacement right on there. Okay. And, so and you know, I, we can get you some information, too, as far as, um, mm -hmm. you know, what you recommend. And, and, you know, some taste good, some don't. And if you're getting the same benefit, why not go with the one that tastes good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I, I'll, write, uh, I'll write you and um, send you the information as far as, like, what kind he sells and what, what type he recommends. And you can, you can get it yourself, Scott. Okay. I hate to monopolize the, the subject, but I have one other question. Yeah. Go for it. What in the world is this body mass index, and why am I almost obese? <laughs> uh, to you know, look I mean, at him, I, that's I hard. Yeah. To look at him, that would be hard no. for me to well, believe. Yeah, you know what it is? It's I, I'm obese as well, you know, and I'm about probably 9% body fat. But, you know, with, with the... You know, w w with the measurements that they use, like if I was going in the, in the service, they would they said, all right, you got to get down to 180 pounds. I weigh 205 right now, so... You're talking 25 pounds. I would it'd have to be all it'd have to come from muscle, you know, and I would have to just lose all that muscle to make that weight on 180 pounds. It, it's really skewered the whole the whole uh, scale of that part too. So I really wouldn't worry much about it. You know, obese obese to me is, is your body fat at 35 percent or higher for males, 22 percent or higher for females. And just talking with Gloria, I, I don't think you're at 35 percent. You're probably right. No, but uh, I just took a wellness exam. Uh huh. Uh, because that's something our my employer, uh, you know, right. offers to yes. and, you know put money into your whatever. Yeah. And uh, I'm six three, about two and a quarter. Mm -hmm. Um, I I could probably shed you know comfortably ten ten or twelve pounds without you know too much you know loss, loss there, loss. but uh -huh. I couldn't get down to 195 pounds or right. 190 pounds You'd without being yeah. anorexic. Right. You'd be a rail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You would be a skinny fat person. I get a lot of those yeah, that come along I mean, too. Yeah. Okay, so that doesn't mean anything. No, that, no, that's, no, no. 
But, I mean, heck, they tell me I'm a walking heart attack and stuff like uh, that, and everything no, else is fine. No, that's what I was saying. Your blood work, right, cholesterol levels, everything there is fine? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Not to worry. There was something else that you asked in your email. What was it, Scott? There was something... You remember? Oh, you're talking about the Ray Lewis stuff, right? The, the velvet ear? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. The, yes. Yeah. Ear yeah. Antlers. All right, ask yeah. the question because yeah. our listeners don't know what we're talking about. So yeah. let's put the question out there so everybody knows what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah as far as that, that's that velvet, that fuzz, peach fuzz type, so to speak, that's on the actual the rack of the of the deer, the, the buck, you know. What, what is it called? Velvet antler. It's a, it's a yeah. deer antler yep. velvet. Yep, deer antler velvet. Yep, that's what they call it too Out as well. of uh, New Zealand, I think, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. they realize, you know, they're looking too, how the, it's amazing how the rack, uh, how it does grow, you know, as the buck does get older, and that's how they discovered they were kind of looking into it. Just like your hemby bark, I don't know if you remember that. That's back when I was in high school, that was huge. And it's just from bark from a tree. You know, that oh, yeah, used. Remember. You know, remember that sublingual, you put it under your, your, your tongue and, and hold on to it for a while, and it gets into your bloodstream that way, too. But uh, the deer antler, but it is a proven supplement. Um, and, uh, you know, with the Super Bowl just happening, too, they, they were trying to say, I, I don't know how true it is or not, if Ray Lewis used it or not, because um, it, it's, it's amazing with the recovery rate for injuries, you know. And he had a torn triceps, um, better than midseason. And uh, usually when you have a torn triceps, you, you wouldn't be able to come back as fast as he did to play. So um, that's why they were questioning you know, something like that, too. You know, but it's, it's the, the crazy thing is it's, it's legal, say, for you and I to have, but, you know, with the NFL or, or the Olympics, too, they have things, th things that they test for, you know, like a fat burner. You know, I mean, a lot of our clients that we use fat burners, you know, but uh, if it was in their system, it's illegal, you know, and now they call it a performance-enhancing drug. Now, if, if, I'm, if I'm correct, they're not able to really test for that. There isn't a test. Isn't that correct? Correct, yes. They, they correct. weren't able to test for it, so... Correct. It doesn't really show up in the bloodstream. Right. So now, being a novice and not knowing a lot about this, why, so are men or athletes using this as a way to recover faster? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. All yep. right. Yep. Even, even you know, when you hear about the, the HGH, human growth hormone right. that's out there too, and that's what they're looking for, the longevity. You know, um, you know, Roger, I don't throw names around, but Roger Clemens, you know, if mm -hmm. you look at this guy, 40 plus years old, still throwing the heat the way he did, you know, just a few years back. Um, you know, again, I sounds like he did it. You know the way you know, the way it, uh, you know with the trainer and in that whole case, listening to it. But um, I, that's what they use it for, for longevity. You know, they want to be able to pitch at that level and continue to uh, you know roll over their contracts. And, you know, and that's how they make their money. You know, and that, and that's what a lot of them are using it for. Not that they be the Hulk, you know, at the plate or at the, on the mound there too. But they are looking at it for that longevity because again, you know, our hormones do decrease just like our testosterone level in, in males decreases as we get older. Again, that's part of the aging process. Exercise will help keep that testosterone level higher. Um, so most guys, you know, at the time, they don't. Um, they become uh, less active. They got a behind-the-desk job, and uh, they got everything working against them. And one day they look in the mirror like, what the heck happened to me? And uh, there it is. You know, you'll let that, uh, that age just kind of creep up. You just become easy prey. And they, you know? inactivity as well. When oh. you're not active, you're not going to, you know, your, your metabolism is going to slow down naturally mm -hmm. because... One, you're inactive. Two, you're not doing anything that's putting any kind of resistance on the muscle. And like Mike likes to talk about, and I was advertising for this show, the more muscle that you have, the more calories great, you can eat. Yeah, it's you a great tool eat. for body fat, to burn yeah. fat. You, you want to eat nice. more, you got to work out. You gotta, yeah, you got to eat. You have to feed the muscle and to maintain it, you have to feed it. You know, So starving is not the answer. You need to feed that muscle. Frequent, keep that metabolism going, or, or kick it in, trick the body like it was when we were 18 years old. You can eat just about anything. Nothing sticks. Let me ask Scott. Scott, are you considering the deer antler whatever? <laughs> uh, and is that because of the knees? Well, I was, I was looking at it for that, uh, you know, to help, uh, you know, recovery of the knees. And, and recently I've got uh, what I suspect to be tendonitis or uh, um, uh, something like that in my shoulder. But uh, I've been lifting with it lately and, and uh, it seems to be getting better the more I lift. So, mm -hmm. but um, I, I wasn't really. I don't, I'm scared of supplements. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm. I don't know whether it's a, a paranoia or a healthy fear, but I just don't like ingesting things in my body that right. I don't know what they are mm -hmm. and what they're going to do to me. Right. And there's not. There, certainly, there is no. There's not enough study on that. And the FDA likes to get their 
their nose involved in everything. And mm-hmm. I know that, you know, there was a purpose for that to protect us, but sometimes they get a little paranoid. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times it's about control and money and, you know, the almighty dollar. And if they can, it's like, uh, natural progesterone for women. Right. It's absolutely harmless. It's so beneficial for women and it's so inexpensive. And as soon as the FDA got wind of all the millions of dollars that was being spent on natural progesterone, they got their big noses in there and said, well, you know what, we're going to regulate this. And so now right. you got to get a prescription. Right. It, does it get something that costs $20 or less and would last a woman for three months and sure make her a happy camper and her husband a real happy camper? But now it's got to be regulated. <laughs> now it's got to be regulated by the FDA. So now I understand, though, I'm not I'm not advocating that people go out and use this right. theory or right. whatever. But un- until there is conclusive evidence and they have not done enough study on that, we just don't know. Right. Right. Exactly. Yep. So, Scott, thank oh, yeah, you I just, so much. I just didn't know the side effects of it. You know, I, I just see everything has potential side effects. Yep. And, uh, you know. It can happen to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could start growing some antlers. So you might want to tell your wife, <laughs> look out darling and don't time yeah. into the hood of the car. <laughs> but it goes the same thing for, it goes for the food that we eat, especially in today's you know society as well. You know, um, I, I don't eat too much red meat at all steak, but, uh, you know, that steak is injected for those, those cows to get bigger, stronger, faster for turnover. Cause they got to produce and, and get that food back out of there. And when they say organic, truly organic, um, when you grow something organic, you got to wait seven years before that soil, you turn the soil again to, to go, to grow again as well, to be truly organic. And that's not happening either because it's all about that turnover. So, um, you know, they're injecting these these uh, cows, cows and, and all chickens. too with that. Yep, and, and that's that's why I believe too, human beings are much bigger today. In the, in the NFL, you got 325-pound linemen across the board. Mm-hmm. You know, um, 15 years ago, 260 was big. Now, you know, that, that won't even make it now. It won't even cut it. So people are bigger because, you know, that's a that trickle-down effect. We we're eating all that stuff. You know? Yeah, we're ingesting all the hormones from the food. And, and um, whether it's cow's milk or whether it's chicken, you see even young girls at the age of 12, you know, they're, they're voluptuous. Yep. Boys that are 12, 13 years old, they're six foot. Mm-hmm. And so that's what Mike is talking about. You know, even though we try to eat as organically and as clean as possible, it's almost impossible to eliminate some of the hormones and some of the chemicals that are in the soil and, and you know, obviously injected. Right. You can have some kind of control by, you know, getting right. farm raised or, you know, you can raise your own head of beef or whatever. Right. But other than that, it's a good question, Scott. I really appreciate you calling in and, and bringing these to Mike's attention. And, and I hope we help, helped a few other people out there with the same kind of questions that you've had. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, be- Gloria. You got it. Thanks, best, Scott. Best I'll send you, Scott. you that information. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Good Bye. question. Yes. That's right. Question. It's nice to hear that uh, somebody's trying to trying to do the best for their body you know, right. by, by moving like that, which is great. You know. And he is, you know, he's one of these these men that, you know, like he said, he's played basketball all through school. Uh, the whole time I've known him, he's played basketball and. um you know, the body starts wearing down Absolutely. and after yeah. a while. And that, that joint, I'm really glad that you brought up the, the inflammation of the joints because yes. what do people do? I mean, we're, we're hearing more and more people. And again, I think it goes back to what you said. We're, we're spending with the technology that we have today. We're not doing physical labor as much. We're right. doing more of, you know, sitting behind a desk and mm-hmm. this is the age of technology. Yes. And so we're, we're a, a society that has become lazy yeah, and absolutely. it's not on purpose yeah, sometimes no. it's just simply because that's the job These kids are raised into that they right have no idea you know i mean i'm 48 years old but i remember after school you know we wanted to <clears throat> increase a say a, a wiffle ball game right for example and we put we taped that wiffle ball with red tape to get a couple of extra innings in because the dark dark is coming along here we can't see the ball so we're trying to prolong that game you know and uh, today they're in they're inside they're on computers xbox things like that and that's what they're doing Look, can't wait to get home to get on that and play. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So there's, there is no activity out there. And that's something that, you know, we should we should think about as a society that we, as parents, we have to realize that our kids depend on us. And that's something else I want to bring up too. Mm-hmm. The young man at yes. the gym that yeah. worked out will bring, because I'm hoping to bring them on the show in the, in the near future. When I left the studio, his grandmother was there. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. 
See, now that that's wonderful. Let me just stop and tell you the story. And I don't know if I mentioned this before or if it was something that I wrote about, but I was at the gym one day and I, I don't, I don't even, I don't think I was in there for training, but I was talking to a woman and uh, she was waiting for her son who was, how old would you say Braxton was? A 14? 14. Yeah. A 14? A 14. And he was training with one of the trainers there. And I was so impressed by that because number one, it's not often that you go to a gym and you see uh, a young boy, 14, 15 years old training. And so I was talking to his mom and she said that Braxton, had, I, don't, I guess it's okay if I mention his first name and not his last name, but she said that he's a very intelligent boy and kids today are under a lot of pressure and it's not just from their peers. Sometimes they put a lot of pressure on themselves themselves. The pressure comes from them to excel and to just continuously exceed their, their own expectations. And at any rate, he had, he was feeling a lot of stress and she started noticing changes in him. And, um, as far as the stress levels and uh, the kind of stress that he was putting himself under and she was concerned and, um, Long story short, I'll, I'll let them tell their story because I have asked them, to, the mom and Braxton, to come on the show, and they've agreed to do so. So we're going to get them on the schedule for that. But it, I think it's an incredible story because I think you as parents who have young teenagers and you would never stop to think about having a trainer for your, your teenager, but that's exactly what she did. And Braxton is just, it was just amazing to watch him. And she said, the mom said that she has just seen her son absolutely turn around and just blossom and his confidence level is just, and it, she, she was never really concerned about his grades because he right. was an overachiever. Yeah. But she was more concerned about the fact that she felt that he was being inhibited in some way or maybe, his, uh, maybe he was, you know, just inactivity because he studies so much and so hard. And she saw that need and she stepped up and said, I'm going to do something about this. And she not only did she do that for him, she joined him. Yes. Yeah. So she, she trains as well. So they share an hour of training and mom, mom's at the, uh, at the juice bar watching, you know, and he's communicating with her, telling me what he just did. And she's watching his form. And, and then, uh, now, now mom's up and, uh, her son takes that same seat that mom left and, and watching again as well too, which is kind of neat. And then there's grandma, <laughs> grandma comes in and she's got a whole one-on-one -on -one session, um, on her own as well too. Or sometimes they're there, they, they follow each other up. Sometimes grandma comes with with the grandson, you know, and then mom is just by herself one-on-one. -on -one. However, the schedule works, which is best for them, but they get in there and it's, it's just a neat thing to see. Three like generations. Yeah. And wow. It, it, what a the, testimony yeah. to elite body, yeah. knowing that the trainers there are so, and you don't, you don't have, I said this before and I'll say it again, and this is why elite body is our, our fitness expert on demand is because they don't just hire certified trainers, you know, trainers today, can go online and answer a few questions and boom, you know, they got a certification in the mail. That is not what you get at elite. Um, why don't you tell a little bit about the, yeah. the schooling well, and education? Yeah, well, as far as certifications, and we talked on it last show too, mm -hmm. but uh, and I'll say it again. I mean, there's certifications and there's certifications. Uh, <laughs> I, I look for the, that science background in my trainer. So they have the anatomy, physiology, kinesiology, that science behind uh, behind them as far as their training goes. So now, you know, they know what's going on with that human body. Uh, they could take uh, an individual out in the, in the wilderness and, and give them a workout using tree limbs. They don't need to have machines, you know, and it goes back to this show where we talked about injuries as well. When you got uh, the biggest taboo and what I see too is what I see trainers train their clients like they train themselves. And they may be a bodybuilder and they may be a pretty good bodybuilder as well. Um, build a nice body for themselves, but every individual has limitations, um, different type goals, what they can do. And, uh, you can, you have to customize a workout, which best for them. You right. can't train them like they, you train yourself. Um, a lady with osteoporosis should not be squatting. Now squats a phenomenal leg exercise. It really is a lot of room for error as well. So that's why that trainer needs to pay attention to detail when, when that uh, client is performing that squat as well too. But, um, not for that lady with the osteoporosis, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's plenty of ways to skinny cat. We can hit those legs in a different way. Um, but again, I see this time and time again out there. It's not regulated here. Um, where like in, in England, you have to have a science background before you even become, decide to become certified as, as a personal trainer, you know, which I think is good. You know, it's, uh, 
Otherwise, you know, in here, so now you're going to have to really weed out and shop your trainer. So I always tell everybody that too as well. If they cannot you know, train at my facility, um, to make sure that you shop your trainer, look for that background that they, what they have because uh, that's important, very important. So now I, you know, I do all the interviewing uh, process too so I can weed those out and I know the ones that just, you know, they have a certification online and they wind up training in the big gyms. I'm not going to, you know, say certain names, but that's where they wind up ending up and they become rep counters or things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but um, Well, let's tell them where they can reach. And now, obviously, this internet radio show goes globally. So obviously, if you're in Australia or Japan, <laughs> you're not going to be able to make it to Elite, but you're still going to be able to once a month here, Mike, and we're going to be bringing information, answering questions. You can always write to me at talkingwithgloria.com and pass along any questions, or they can actually reach you through your website if you want to give the website address um, and also get the location of where you are in Palm Harbor on US 19. Yeah. US 19. That's 34310 US Highway 19 North, then Palm Harbor. It's a beautiful plaza and uh, we're, we're talked over in the corner with a nice courtyard out in front we utilize even outside as well with clients bungee cords things like that we do we flip tires we got the uh, the tow rope there that we that we do as well and you'd be amazed at different type of people that do this stuff too it's it's, it's really neat to see i uh, like the boxing the boxing yeah. i like the boxing <laughs> boxing you hit heavy bags or a or a, a dummy that they use for self-defense that you see a lot too so you have to I can think of a few cavity. dummies yeah, I'd like to punch. A couple of headshots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, and it's a, it's a great workout in disguise, too. And it's a great outlet for stress. You know, and everybody has stress. We all have stress in different ways. Um, great release. I see that you, you brought know. some uh, toys with you. Yeah, actually, I bought a band here. Um, you uh, want to tell me what you got up okay. your sleeve <laughs> no. there? Well, I was just going to kind of show, but it, it might be tough here in, in this in well, the situation I can here watch with us, but see. okay. What are you, what were you going to show? Well, we're going to have a band, and a lot of my clients they do travel, you know, and their jobs take them everywhere now, oh, and the, the band weighs not even a pound. Well, let's show them. Okay, so hold let me it just up so the up camera can. Here. So okay. anybody can get one of these at, at Walmart yep. it's a or a rubber band. Else. They're usually color coded, you know, and uh, you guys can see different that different gauges, sure. you know, that we have with these handles at the end. You can just about do hit every muscle group using this band. You can pack this up and take it. You're in a hotel room. You want to work your triceps, your biceps, chest, legs. It's just it's going to provide nice resistance for you. You're not going to be able to walk around with, with free weights and, and packing free weights as you travel through. But the band is excellent. And we do a lot of band work. We do it. We try to do like a nice blend. We use some free weights, machines, um, band work as well, too. You're using a lot of plyometrics where you're using your own body weight for resistance. Um, once that becomes easy for you, then we can add some weight to that. You know, like the step ups that we mm -hmm. did the last couple of times when we trained legs. You know, right? Um, phenomenal, phenomenal exercise. So the bands, they're amazing what they can do. Ab work. Um, again, they're different gauges. So if one becomes e too easy for a certain exercise, you can step up to the next gauge on that band. You know, it's just it's a little thicker band. It can provide a little bit more resistance for you. Can you? I mean, we can try if you want because. You want to? I mean, do you okay. want to try to show show right, anything? Do, I'll, I'll stay seated so you can see me. Okay. So I'm going to perform just a, what we call a shoulder press. All right. All so right. he's basically stepping. He's yep, sitting I, in the chair. I'm that band mounted. I, I, I'm stepping. My weight is on the floor with the band underneath me. If you can see, I got the band yeah. right underneath my arm. Okay. Now I can just perform a shoulder press just like this here. Control, control coming down. Otherwise, that band's going to want to do this. Snap you down. If you want to control that. Yeah. Bicep, turn the bicep. Tricep. I got the elbows pointing toward the ceiling as I'm coming up. The tricep. Excellent. It's amazing. Just, I didn't even leave my seat here. And I just did also some uh, chest. I can do chest as well, too, from a seated position. You can work your legs as well. Um, it, they're phenomenal. They really are. And uh, like I said, and, it's really easy to, to travel with. And these they can get, like I said, Walmart, yeah. uh, Walmart Target. Walmart, Target, Sports it, Authority, okay. Sports. Yeah, they, 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 they all carry them. To do. That's excellent because when I when I used to travel, I would do uh, a few little other things. They didn't have the bands, but that's a great idea. Right. How did you, what would you do for the chest? For the chest, as a lay down yeah. position, or even standing up, I would put it oh, attach oh, it to oh. something from behind. But I'm just going to mimic it now, and uh -huh. as you're pushing up, so now I get the resistance behind me as I'm coming forward. Oh, doing a chest okay, press. okay, so excellent. From a seated seated position, or lie down position, or even standing. Now this is something too that you can do at home. I mean, it, 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 this isn't. Obviously, you don't have to be a traveling person, but if 
maybe there's somebody that's injured and they just can't get out or you simply cannot get to a gym for whatever reason. Maybe you're a a new mom and you've got a baby at home and the baby's only sleeping a couple of hours. This is someone. And you said the resistance on these bands come at different Different, levels. uh, Yeah, different levels, different gauges. The thicker, naturally the the, the smaller, thinner band will give you less resistance, more of like a beginner level. Um, intermediate and then you got some advanced ones where they want to just snap back on you so you got to control that negative coming out too and uh it gives you a great workout so the whole idea of, of what you want to do is you always want to stimulate your muscle um otherwise if you don't again the aging process that we talked about it's going to at- it wants to atrophy that's what the aging process wants it wants to atrophy muscle it wants to collect body fat flexibility wants to decrease right balance wants to decrease so that all you get all these benefits from training from working out using resistance training. Um, Mike, talk a little bit about, because I get this question asked a lot and a couple of times since our last show. Women uh, are, when they ask how often I eat and I tell them mm-hmm. <laughs> every three <laughs> to four nuts. hours, they look at me like, do you have diabetes? And right. I'm, yeah. Can you address that? Well, you know, it's funny you say that. Um, I've trained... Uh, Gals, guys, or even for shows that are self-administered diabetics. And what I say to them, wow, you, the hard part is over for you. You got it. Because you know the importance for that blood sugar level. You're going to have to check it all the time and eat frequent to keep it there. Well, that's what you need to do to, uh, you know, to, to, to build that muscle that you want to do and keep that body fat down so you look great on stage. You know, and that's what it is. So they look at me like, wow, but that's, that's the toughest problem. When people used to eat, they're used to eating three squares a day. You feed them five or six times every three hours, four hours maybe. If it's a shake, two hours later you're eating again. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they look at you like, oh, my God, I'm going to put so much weight on. But it, 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 what it does, it just kind of, it, it keeps up that metabolism like we talked about with that fire last time. You got a fire going and it's, it, the fire's going down. You throw another log on that thing to keep it burning. That's what you want to do with your metabolism. Just keep it reeling. So it's going. So now when you're sleeping, like when I'm sleeping, my, my metabolism is probably higher than the average bear that's walking around. Mm-hmm. You know, and then with the amount of muscle too, I'm burning fat in a sleep position, in a horizontal position than these people do walking around because they don't do much of anything. And, uh, you know, they don't have that muscle on the body and you're just going to bog the whole, everything down, the metabolism down. So now when you do eat, you're just teaching your body, I may have to survive off this. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a survival mechanism. So I'm going to eat. It doesn't know when it's going to be fed again. So I'm going to store that away. You know, like a squirrel would do with nuts, you know, and then mm-hmm. pack them away for, for another time. And it's the body will store it, you know, and that's what happens, that's you know, and you'll see people too. Oh, I don't, I only eat two, three times a day. I don't eat past six o'clock, you know, and, and so now they're eight, nine hours of no nutrition. They're worried and they're wondering why they tired all the time. Mm-hmm. They, you know, forget working out. If you got no energy, you're going to look at it and just turn, you know, forget it. You know, it's not going to happen. So we teach them to eat frequent small meals and you'll see that the body from working out too, you, you'll, you'll get that appetite that you want it. Mm-hmm. And, um, like I said, you, You'll, now you'll tell start. tell our listeners too why it's so important before a workout and how soon before a workout. Now mm-hmm. again, we're talking about using resistance, using right. weights. But we're not talking about cardio. Why is it so important that they do get a meal in right. prior to? Because the general thought process of most Americans is less is more, and so if I right. don't eat any anything in the morning and I get the kids off to school or I go to work or whatever. It's hours, like you said, right. you, you got to count the hours that you've been sleeping and now you're up yep. and you haven't eaten anything and you hit the gym and you get to the gym maybe nine o'clock, right. eight o'clock, nine o'clock, whatever. And they have not eaten anything. Right. Address there's no, that. There's, there's, no <laughs> fuel, there's no fuel in the body. You know, it's like that race car we talked about. Now you're going to ask it to perform. You know, uh, uh, what do you expect? You know, um, you may f- first 15, 20 minutes, your glycogen level is depleted. You got nothing left. Workout's over. You know, because there's nothing to work off of. So timely meal. So you want at least 45 minutes to an hour uh, for, for some digestion, but now it's there to work off of, you know. And, uh, and, and the reason why for the timing is because it's demanding energy, the body, for you to digest. So if you eat too close to your workout, you're demanding energy uh, or demanding some um, energy from the body from your workout. But at the same time, the body's time to digest, and you're kind of creating a tug of war there too, which you don't want either. So you want to have at least 45 minutes to an hour to digest, and now you have that fuel in the tank, mm-hmm. so to speak, uh, to use to get you through that workout and, and, and be able to push yourself. Because that's, right. that's what it's all about. You know, you get, you get out what you put into it. You know, so you're not going to be out there just going through the motions. 
Well, I know for when, with our training, usually in the morning, I always have, uh, if, if I'm going to be training late in the morning, I'll have a, a protein shake. And when I say protein, I mean meal, meal, yeah, replacement. meal yes. replacement. Yep. And uh, depending on the time, and if not, then especially if it's going to be a leg day, I'm going to make sure that I get some oatmeal and I sprinkle some protein, just protein, not protein and carbs, because the oatmeal is the carbs. Exactly. And I always make sure that's at least 60 to 90 minutes ahead of time. And And, and if you notice, Glory said on leg day, and the reason why, because those (laughs) are the larger muscle groups in the body, so it's work. So when you train legs the way you're supposed to, you're going to be tired, you know, you're going to, you know, you're going to be at the cusp where you're almost sick, you know, and, uh, that's, that's what it comes out to. It's a, it's a large muscle group. So it's more demand on the body, um, to, to train them, you know, and I see it all the time. You see, especially with guys, it's a cop out to me, but they don't really train their legs because it is work, you know, mm-hmm. that's why you don't see people deadlifting too much. Phenomenal exercise, a lot of room for error too. But if you perfect that exercise, I mean, that's the one exercise. If somebody said, pick one right now that you have to do for the rest of the year, only one. That's a no-brainer. It's a deadlift, you know, because it's you're working upper body as well, but it's like a squat. You, you got your legs, your glutes, core, traps, everything working, but your heart rate is working too because it's work. It's demand. It's a lot on the body, but uh, the benefits are tremendous. But people don't like to work, you know. Yeah, they don't like and to. L- let's talk too a, b- a little bit about the intensity of the workout because you and I we work together thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Yes. Now. Obviously, some people can train, and you have clients for sixty minutes right. for an hour. Yep. But with me, it's it's thirty minutes, and it is thirty minutes of the most intense. <laughs> I thought I was tough when I used to do this, but this—I mean, you really, really know how to work the body and right. and and push me out of my comfort zone. Right now, so let's talk a little bit about the intensities mm-hmm. because a lot of people. I see them come through on my on my social media feeds and say they'll say, "Oh, I was at the gym for two hours." Yeah. Overkill. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. let's explain why that is. Right. Right. Um, That's a common thing. Very. Much I mean, so. you yeah, hear that become, in Hollywood and everything yeah, else. It's become, constant. They're just gym rats. You know? Yes. Yeah. You know, after forty five minutes, really, of, of training the way you're supposed to, you're actually counter counterproductive now as far as continue to work out. You know, continuing. You know. Um, you're younger, yes, you can do, have a little bit longer workouts, but you're, you know, when you're, you're older, you just got to hit it hard and then get out and let that re- muscle repair recovery happen, you know. Um, but you got to be wise with that time. For the 30 minutes, there's no there's small talk in between sets. If that, if the breathing is heavy, I won't even talk, you know, because it, it takes energy for them to talk, to reply back or so. So I just kind of feel for them. I ask them to stand tall, slow, deep breaths, and we get right back into it. But what we'll do is, um, for Glory's goals as well, we'll do a lot of supersetting, giant setting. Supersetting is when you go from one exercise to the other. And a lot of times I'll use what they call an antagonist. That's just this fancy word for opposite, where if I'm going to, let's say on an upper body day, she's going to go chest, and right from there I'll go into back, where it's a push to a pull. So it's continuous heart work on the heart rate, you know, but now when we come back to that chest again, she's, she's got some rest because when she was pulling with the back, those chest muscles, the push muscles are recuperated a little bit here, so then she can give it that same intensity as well. If you went from chest to shoulder, it's a push and then a push. When you come back to chest, not, now you're going to sacrifice that second set of chest. You know what I mean? And then it, then it just kind of, they work off each other, you know? So the, it's, it's important in how you break up the, the muscle groups. If you're doing a giant set, you can go from a push to a pull to a push. A giant set, in definition, is a superset plus one. So you got three consecutive exercises. It can be three different muscle groups. It can be the same muscle group, but different, different angles as well, too. And, and what that does, it, it almost incorporates a cardio session inside of your your, your training session. You Almost. Well, all right, it <laughs> Almost. Yeah. It always does with yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because he's always telling me, stand up straight and breathe. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, the most thing, to do, the common thing to do is when you're tired, you see runners, and I used to teach PE too, they want to just bend over and hands on the knees and trying to catch their breath, but they're mm-hmm. trapping that air that's inside there. So it's going to take them actually that much longer to recover. They stand up tall, hands on the head, where they open up your airway, slow deep breaths, and you'll be amazed how that heart rate comes back down to normal uh, much, much quicker. Right, right. Very good point. Very good point. Now, um, let's talk about a little bit about some of these um, injuries that that how to prevent some of the injuries, Mm -hmm. because uh, I had a couple of people ask me how, what, why am I having so many problems with my knees? Would you and and I hope you address it the way that (laughs) I think you're going to. But that's that seems to be a very, very common question that I'm getting asked. Well, form is everything, you know, and and it's that, that trainer. They really need to watch that form to make sure that the 
muscles that are being worked for that particular exercise is taking the brunt of, of that exercise, that movement, you know. Um, for example, a squat or a lunge, I'll stand off to the side on the profile of that client purposely. So I'm watching that knee. If I see that knee come forward, exceeding the toe line, no good. It's putting all that the pressure on the patella, which is, mm. your, is your kneecap. You have to stay back on it, stay on your heel. Your foot is flush for stability. You don't want to try to balance on your heels because then your stability is going to go out the window. But keep it flush, but the emphasis is on the heel. All right, And then, then that knee is not coming forward. I can be able to put a, a rod right through your knee like an axle. And that, that knee should stay right in place there. And you work off of that. And you'd be amazed how you feel it like a, for a, a lunge on the quads, hams, and glutes. Incredible. Um, and it's just a tweak of a movement. Also, the biggest thing real quick is um, momentum is not your friend, you know, um, with, with weight training. You see a lot of that, you know, if they're curling, throwing the hips in there or so. You want to be in command of the weight. Don't let the weight control you. If the weight's controlling you, you're too, you're too heavy. Lighten up the weight and execute the way you're supposed to. You'll get much more... Uh, Benefits from that and a lot less risk of injury. And that's a, that's a big problem in the gym is that too much of the ego is getting involved Absolutely. because they're, they're conscious of people watching them and rather than drop the weight down to something that's manageable but will still give them the resistance that they need and, and the build that, they, that they're going for, exactly. they go with the, the big weight. Right. You know, and, you, right. and like you said, you watch them, the, the back is out of form. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. Yep. But all the time. don't you also think, too, uh, we, we talked about this, and I know we've only got about four minutes, but when we're sitting a lot, mm -hmm. and this is a, a problem that I know a lot of people have been asking me, you know, I'm having knee problems, and I've never had knee problems. I've, I've never even done any exercise that would cause a knee problem. Sitting a lot at a desk or at, your, at the job mm -hmm. is going to affect the knees. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lack of movement as well, yes. too. Yep. So is there any particular, and this was asked actually just today before I came to, to the studio, is there any exercise that somebody can do who's constantly having knee pain even though they've had an x-ray and there's, no, there's nothing wrong there? Right. What can they do to strengthen their knees? Uh, they could perform a squat right in the office where they're doing squats. You can hold on to something for some balance at first. Eventually, they're not going to be able to have to hold on. For that to perform that exercise, but it, that is amazing what it's doing for the tendons and ligaments in those knees. But you were most you, what you were saying about the seated, like the position that we're in right now, mm -hmm. seated. It's probably the most sitting I've done all day. You know, I, that's why I love my job. I'm always on my feet moving. <laughs> um, but if you do have to sit and you're bound to a computer, a Swiss ball or a physio ball you're talking about, it's a round ball filled with air, like a beach ball, but um, almost puncture proof. I say almost. Cause I've seen them break before, but you know, a, a beach ball wouldn't hold up. But you sit on that and use that for your chair. As you're on the computer, you have no armrests, no back seat, and you're sitting up high, and that core has to be in use, you know, and it's going to force that good posture, you know, and now that core is working, lower back, which is your, your erector spine, have to work to keep you sitting up. We have in a chair like this, you, you can sit down here, you got the phone here, you, your neck's cranked over, um, you just develop very bad, poor habits as, as far as your posture goes, sitting in a chair. That's a good point because that's, Mike does that with me sometimes if he's going to have me do shoulder presses or a curl. He'll have me do it on a Swiss ball, yep. which makes me, makes the core get activated. <laughs> and it makes that exercise a little more difficult. For example, on that shoulder uh, press, as you're pushing up, you're sinking on that ball. So you're not going to get any leverage, any help from that. So it's a nice thing about that is you can lower the weight using the weight. Less your joints will thank you for it, but you're going to get the same benefits. And your trainer gets a good laugh and <laughs> he's watching you try to balance yourself on that. But that's a great exercise. Yes, it is. Is it there is. anything else you want to add before, because we've only got a couple minutes here and is, where can they reach you? Where's Leet? It, it's in, in Palm Harbor, right on US 19. Um, your website? Website. Okay. It's elitebodypersonaltraining.com. Um, like them on Facebook. Yeah, like Just, on the yeah. Facebook. And if, Mike, you, if you have you any can't... email questions, it's Mike. At EliteBodyPersonalTraining.com. Um, any, any type of fitness questions or nutrition questions, things like that. Sometimes people have uh, questions, but they're kind of afraid to ask, you know, with, with an audience in the background. So you come on and, and get, email me. That's right. Yep. And you, again, you can go to the Facebook page. If you can't remember that, you can always check with me and ask, you know, how, how, do, how do I find Mike's page? Because if you go to their website, You'll also find videos. Yes. It'll lead you to the video, some of the video instructional videos that he shows you how to do certain exercises. And um, there's 
couple of them on your Facebook page yes, too yes, as well. Yep. So you, you can't really get lost. And just, again, if you do and you can't remember, then it's going to always be posted on my website, talkingwithgloria.com. Mike, you're going to be coming back. Um, and I'm hopeful, hopefully next month when we have you back and or will that be the first of March, I guess? Mid-March. Yeah, mid-March. Mid okay, with, with about four weeks. February now, about four weeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's February. Yep. Yep. So mid-March, we'll have you back on, and maybe we'll get the, these tables out of the way if we yeah. can. Yep. And uh, it was kind of short notice because mm -hmm. the last time we were in Studio One, now we're in Studio Two, so this is a little bit smaller. But the point is, is we're going to be able to show you some exercises, but Mike does have really good instructional videos on his website so like them on facebook go to my website like me on on my website and you'll be able to find mike and elite body and there's just so much information sign up for their newsletter mike is also what's the magazine that you're the expert and, oh it's a destinations of, of tampa bay magazine so it's a, again for people to, to reach out email questions um one of the fitness experts there on the panel and uh it's a great magazine. That's a great yeah, honor. A high, yeah, it really is. It's nice, and um, you just fire away your questions, and we'll get them out. To you. We'll get the. I'll get those answers out to you. Okay, great. And I'm going to be talking down in Sarasota. I don't exactly have the date yet. Should have the date certainly by next week. But you can, if you um, are a subscriber of my newsletter, or if you link to me with LinkedIn or talking with Gloria or Facebook. Uh, I'll be able to keep you abreast as to when I'll be speaking. I'm going to be speaking in Sarasota within the next couple of weeks and also here in Clearwater. So that'll be tapping into your inner power. So you definitely want to keep in touch with me so you know when that is. And we will see you next Wednesday night. But I want to tell our listeners, I'm so excited about this. In two weeks, we're going to have Michael Rhodes back on from Australia. You might remember him from about a month ago. He's going to be back on. We're going to be Skyping in with him, and he's going to be blowing our minds again. It was a fantastic show when we had him. So I'm very honored that Michael is going to grant us another interview. So, And that will be in two weeks, two weeks from tonight. So make sure you tune in. Mike, thank you so thank much you. You. For, for joining me again in the studio. And my, again, my apologies for last week. And we will see you probably in about four, four more weeks, I guess. Four more weeks. Right. And uh, again, if you have any questions, make sure you write to me at Gloria at talkingwithgloria.com or you can Facebook me and ask your questions. If there are questions for Mike, I can pass them on to him too because he's going to kick my butt tomorrow. So, <laughs> Okay, so that's all the time that we have for tonight, you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Mike, thanks for joining me Thank again. You. Thank you. And don't forget, you know, join us on Facebook and make sure that you like Mike's page, Elite Body. Okay. All right. I guess that's it. Good Thank night. you. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. You've been talking with Gloria. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. She has a wonderful personality. She really does. You are listening to Talking with Gloria. Let's take a walk on the wild side. With your host, Gloria Ponziano. Yeah.